One more day, guys. One more day, and the Dolphins play the Bucks. What's up, Fem fans? It is day 10 of training camp. To start it off, no Brendel for 10 consecutive practices. He's a backup center, and he hasn't practiced for 10 consecutive practices. Um, should they start looking for another backup center? I don't know, but that's not good. No haze. Um, he was doing some boxing drills, um, working on his... Uh, punching and his swims and stuff like that so he wasn't practicing because of his um calf injury or his hamstring injury he probably won't be playing on thursday i'm telling you right now a lot of starters aren't going to be playing on thursday um starters today were tankersley up outside of um H howard Kaziki and gray were the two starting tight ends gotcha with the starters so to start 11 11s on uh with a sack wake and branch Sack Tannehill. Be pre pre prepare yourself. And Gachow with an offsides. Um, that was all. They, they give credit to T Tannehill's uh, cadence on that one. Um, Larson starting at left guard. Um, that's just you're giving Sitton a, a break today. Uh, Tannehill incomplete pass. He led Stills too much on an out route. Um, and then Tannehill incomplete batted down at the line of scrimmage by Taylor. Again, if you don't like hearing offense having a bad day, you might want to fast forward to uh, the press conferences because it, it's bad. Gore sidesteps Harris, but then he gets tackled for a, for like a one-yard gain uh, by Phillips. Four drops. There was four drops so far within the first 20 minutes of uh, training camp. Uh, there's no running room. Sacks galore. Very ugly offense. Very ugly. Um, and then Lippitt gets hurt, so you're probably watching this video because of that, because it's it's in the title. Lippitt gets hurt and he limps off the field. Um, I'm not gonna drag this out and be like, I'm gonna tell you the rest of the camp and not let you know if he's all right. He got hurt. He limped off the field. They were checking his ankle on the sideline. He went inside for them to examine the ankle. He came back out and he was on the sideline. He came back on his own accord. He was jogging to the sideline. He didn't go back in, but he was out on the sideline with his helmet. So. Is that a good sign? Is that a bad sign? I don't know. I still don't know if he's alright, but the fact that he jogged and stuff, he might have just sprained his ankle. He most likely won't be playing on Thursday. Fails to Grant, and then fails to Wilson. Nice throws on both of those passes. Then Osweiler to Balage, um, and then Osweiler to Scott. Again, nice passes. The reserve O-line was doing really well versus the reserve D-line, second team, third team. And then Casson Collins. Our linebacker, I'm assuming he's like third, fourth string linebacker, lights up Sonoris Perry. Like hard. Harder than he probably should have because they weren't wearing full pads. Um, so a lot of people notice that. Then Sanders, he misses a 33-yard field goal. So instantly I'm like, we, we the kickers need to play well because we had Parky and then we let him go. So these kickers need to step up. He tried another 33 right afterwards, made it. Then after that, he made six consecutive kicks. Um, let me give you the distances on those six kicks. 39, 36, 33. Reasonable area for a kicker to make. 41, 44. Reasonable. I'm assuming he heard that Joseph made a 61-yarder yesterday, so then he makes a 59-yarder. So the kicking is getting better. Um, it's promising. Be more consistent, especially if the game's on the line and we need a field goal to win, like, and we get you as close as possible on a 45-yarder. Please, I'm, I. It's one thing I hate about uh, watching football games is when the Dolphins they tend to do that to us, and then I, I never watch the field goal. I just wait for the bar to either lose their shit or get quiet. Then Tannehill with a nice short pass to uh, Gray. Uh, Tankersley was covering Gazicki, and he was doing a very good job of it. Um, Drake with a two-yard run, stopped by Spence. Uh, Carew caught a red zone touchdown on two consecutive plays. So Carew was just trying to say, hey, I'm still here. Don't forget about me. Tannehill to Stills for a 14-yard pass. Um, it's a good job, line, good job by the offensive tackles because they were getting a lot of pressure. Um, 
haven't seen a lot of throws to Devontae Parker most of camp. Now, is that because Xavier Howard is covering him and doing a great job of it? Or is it because what's going on with Devontae Parker? He won't be playing Thursday. I'm get, I'm. You're not going to see Stills, Parker, or Tannehill, Drake, Gore. Like, you're not going to see any of them Thursday. It's the first preseason game. You'll see some of them in the second, but I'm, you won't see the starters on Thursday. And then this is where, like, you think, like, oh, the offense is getting better. This is where it goes right downhill. Uh, false start. So it causes a first and 15 from the 40. Then miscommunication between Tannehill and Amendola. Then gotcha out sacks Tannehill. And then just to give you guys, like, a breakup of, like, just sadness with this team and this offense here's a video Charles Harris one hand catching the football it's a defensive end but he's catching the football with one hand tip drill make you feel better and then Tunsil is trying to walk something off I don't know if he pulled something but Sam Young comes in for left tackle um his day is just it's just bad uh, then fails to Duarte then an illegal shift then fails to Wilson after he scrambles out. So up and down with this whole thing. Uh, Wood Woodard sacks fails, and then Sanders is doing great with kickoffs. He is kicking the ball so that it lands at the goal line a little before, a little after. So it makes the kick returners think like, "What do I do? Do I, I have to take it out? You know, you never know." And then we're already running down the field. And then Rashad Jones sought out Gazicki on one on ones. Um, so he wanted him and Gazicki to constantly do one-on-ones. Eventually, Gazicki is horrible at blocking, and he was getting blitzed a ton by um, Rashad Jones. And Rashad Jones isn't great at coverage, so now he's sought out Gazicki, who's great at jumping up and getting the ball. And then um, Mike Gazicki catches a tight end on Mika Fitzpatrick. Mika Fitzpatrick was covering him great, and he was all over him. It's just Gazicki, you throw the ball up, he's going to catch it. Uh, McDonald with the red zone interception on Osweiler and fails to Morgan and Smythe for a touchdown. The reserves are showing life, showing that they're doing better than the offense. Uh, Woodard with the sack, another sack on fails. It was just a horrible offensive line play today. And then Kaziki whiffs on a block on Fitz, and it would have an another blind. It was a blind side, so it would have like destroyed Tanhill and not destroyed it because he can't take it, but like. He would not have seen it coming. And then I have this picture here, or this video here, of uh, Devontae Parker with a nice catch, and then he like stops at the sideline, corner keeps going, would have been a touchdown, to end it. Let's end it on a, on a high note. Then I got Gazicki and Gase um, press conference. So Gazicki, he essentially, they, you know, he's like, they're not going to let up on me. They want me to be better. They're going to keep blitzing me. They're going to keep doing all this stuff. I need to be a better blocker. All he wants to do is earn the trust of the coaches. He wants to go out there and make plays, you know, stupid mistakes, so that they can call on him more. So he knows what his faults are, and he's working on it. And he knows why they're picking on him. Everyone knows why he's picking on them. Um, and then Gase, to get back to the Langford injury, uh, to get back to the uh, Langford signing, he said he just they just wanted more depth for the preseason games. Um, it's not a guarantee that he's going to make the team. It's not even a guarantee that he'll be top three running back. Right now... It's Drake Gore, and then I think Sonoris Perry, and then Balage on the depth chart. But again, the depth chart would change. They just brought him in because they needed more bodies for running back, because Gore and Drake aren't going to play Thursday. And then he he like he tried to defend his offense and say, in training camp it swings. One day the offense can be doing great, the other day the defense can. Do it's been swinging one way most of training camp, so I don't know what he's talking about. Um, but he said he's comfortable with the offensive progress. Um, Maybe they're just getting the defense is just getting used to the offense, so we'll see on Thursday. He said that Robert Quinn is more comfortable with his hand in the dirt. So that's what he's going to be doing. He's not going to be dropping back in coverage. And they had him do that in the ram with the Rams, and you, you can just see he's more comfortable just rushing and stopping the run. So that's what he'll be doing with the Dolphins. He said that Kaziki doesn't get hung up on one play. So if he makes a bad play, he's not dwelling on it and he's not feeling crappy about it. He moves on to the next thing. And then he said the winning comes down to the turnover margin. If you remember in 2008, we had like one of the best turnover margins in the league. I think we had the best turnover margin in the league, and we were winning close games. All comes down to turnovers. He's not giving the players any instruction on the national anthem with Thursday. Um, he, do he doesn't care. He wants to play football, and that's all he's concerned about. And then the final thing he said 
was Lipit is being evaluated. So that's what I got for you from them. Now let's get to your comment or question of the day. Uh, this one I liked a lot. Um, this is from Greg. I love my fans. 247. He asked, Hey Dougley, for the past three years or so, this franchise has not come through with players that can overall change the team, going from mediocre to at least a solid playoff team. Should the scout, scouts or player evaluators need to be changed? I agree with you. A lot of our drafts, um, we haven't had great talent evaluation, and even with free agency, we haven't had great talent evaluation. I think that the biggest problem is when you look at a draft, if you can get three starters out of a draft, it's a I three to four starters out of the draft, I think it's a successful draft. There's been a ton of drafts where the Dolphins have gotten three to four starters. The problem is they don't keep them. If we kept all of the guys we drafted, like the Patriots do, like the Packers do, like all of these teams do, we probably would have been consistently going up, trending towards a winning team. We got rid of Lamar Miller, Olivier Vernon, Charles Clay, um, like all of these guys, we just, Jarvis Landry, you know, we just used them for four years and then let them go. Just let them go. Just imagine if we still had a team with Lamar Miller, with Olivier Vernon, with um, Jarvis was still here, with Charles Clay was still here. We wouldn't have a problem with tight end. Like, so that's, that's where I, what I think. Uh, I do think that the scouting and player evaluation is iffy and it does need to be a little bit better but I also think that when we have good players we need to keep them and if we have bad players or mediocre players to not overpay them that's what we do let me just address the elephant in the room before I end the video um, last night I commented on Kay Flexen's video uh, I was wrong in the way I said it I said that you know He's a camp body, you're looking way too far into it, and I put too many whys. Um, I should have done that. I should have commented differently. I messed up. I came off like a douche. Um, so he was justified in what he said. Um, I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm not saying he jumped down my throat. Um, I was wrong. I apologized to him multiple times. Um, I should have worded it differently. I should have just said, um, he's a camp body. He'll probably never make it, blah, blah, blah. Um, or should never say anything at all. But I like watching his videos, so I thought I would, you know, read, you know, comment. Um, but it's just the the thread that's going on right now on that comment, and like people, two people have unsubscribed, which I don't want. I don't want you guys to unsubscribe. I want you guys to subscribe to his channel and to my channel. I'd like to collab with him. Um, but I don't know if that's going to happen now. I think I I hope there's no bad blood between him. I have no ill will or any hostility towards K Flexen at all. Uh, like I said, I messed up, so I'm, I apologized for it. Um, I'd like to still collab with him, but I don't know. I don't know where he's coming from. I don't know how he feels about it. Don't be mad at him, and don't unsubscribe to him. I shouldn't have said anything, and that's my fault. But that's the video. Um, comment below. Questions, all that stuff. I love reading you guys' comments. I love putting it in comment of the day and question of the day. It's super fun. Uh... So Thursday we're going to stream, uh, I'm going to stream myself watching the game, but on Thursday I'm going to pick the 11 guys that are going to be in the Fantasy League. So, so far I've been writing down names of people who said, you know, I want in or I'm in on yesterday's video. If you got a heart or a, th a thumbs up and a heart, I got you. You know, I read it, I wrote your name down. Um, in this video again, comment, say I'm in. Uh, I want to be in the league so I can get your name, so I can pick your guys' names out of the hat on Thursday because I'm going to do it on the live stream. So, you know, if you don't watch the live stream, like say you can't watch it with me because you're busy working or whatever, I'm going to make, I'll put it in the post video where I talk about the first preseason game. Um, follow me on Twitter because I'll also post who's going to be in the league on Twitter so you guys can give me your emails. Um, follow my second channel. I'm actually going to get mad in today. And then we're going to play it tomorrow, and I'm going to post a video on Thursday and Friday. Pack openings and all that cool stuff. But yeah, that's the video. Day 10 of training camp. There's only two days left, and then no more training camp. And then 
you're going to get more just game videos and picks from me. Um, I want to do a bunch of collabs with a bunch of other Finns YouTubers, so if you know of any other Finns YouTubers that are super cool and want to do a collab, say, hey, reach out to Dougley Durong. He'll love to do a collab with you. You know, even if they're just NFL YouTubers, I'm totally down to do collabs with anyone. I think that'd be super cool to reach out there and mingle with NFL players, uh, NFL YouTubers and different players. But other than that, I appreciate you guys. I will see you guys on Thursday. Uh, I'm going, I'll tweet out when I'm going live, but again, game starts at 7, I'll be on at 6.30. So other than that, like usual, be nice to each other, be respectful, ends up. What's up, Fin fans? So today, training camp, we got the depth chart yesterday. Today's training camp day 9, but I guess in a whole it's day 10. But yes, the Saturday was a scrimmage, so I don't consider that training camp. So today, training camp day 9. Uh, a few notes before we start.